Podcast with Chris Piag. No pretense, no bullshit. Just Chris and an employer talking about a real life business problem. Offer a solution and get a job. And here is your host, Chris Piag. If you joined uh, the show tonight. Um, for those of you who listen to the Immigrants Bill podcast uh, for the first time, uh, let me explain a little bit what you can expect here um, this evening. Uh, we always have uh, an honored guest. I will tell you in a second who this is for this uh, evening. And uh, this guest is usually uh, a manager from Germany who is offering jobs in English. And what we will do together in this roughly 20, 25, 30 minutes is we will talk um, with this manager about the goals and the challenges behind this job, the stuff that's usually not written in uh, a job description. Description uh, in a job advertisement, uh, they often talk about the hammer, no? the kind of skills that they are looking for, but very... Uh, uh, we talk about what is the hammer for? Do you want to put a picture on the wall? Do you want to build a boat? Do you want to kill your wife? That's all stuff that you can do with your hammer, uh, but uh, you don't read about it in the um, in the job advertisements. And um, the job manager in this case, uh, who is offering the job, allows us to the goal behind the job. And that allows, to, allows us to talk about how uh, is success defined for this job? And you, uh, as uh, the listener to the show, if you're listening live, you will have a chance to ask uh, our guest, uh, which name I will tell you in a moment, the goals he wants to achieve, uh, about uh, the challenges that he faces on his way to this goal. And uh, if you have the right background, then you can offer a solution as well. And the solution, if it's uh, smart and... Um, uh, practical, maybe, uh, will lead uh, to you uh, to a successful job application with our guest and hopefully to a job in the future. So basically, in one sentence, the goal of uh, the podcast is uh, to bring together international professionals like yourself and German employers and have them talk to each other about that what really matters, success for the position they are looking for. So I don't want to, uh, to tease you any longer and uh, want to welcome our guest for today's uh, Immigrants Build podcast. Here is Moritz Delbrück, uh, CEO of Justix GmbH. Hello, Moritz. Hi, Chris. Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that um, that agreed to come and uh, um, liked very much about um, when we first talked about you joining the that. Uh, you are so excited about hiring international talent. Uh, there is uh, some companies who uh, grudgingly uh, agree to try someone with an international background because they can't find any more. But with Justix Game, there is the opposite. You you want international talent. Uh, can you tell our readers why you are so keen to work with people from from a very diverse background? Sure, absolutely. So our task at Justix is to build legal tech business models and to execute them and, and build them up in international markets. So, you know, like when you approach or when you build up an international market and you want to serve many different markets out of Cologne, you need international people because, I mean, how else can you provide service for these markets, right? So um, we're building a very international uh, team and we've already grown to 22 people out of 11 from 11 different nationalities at the moment. And we're definitely uh, keen on, uh, on having uh, more P uh, more team members uh, joining us from, of course, many different cult uh, countries of the world. Yeah, you said that uh, um, you want to build an international business and um, go to the market uh, in, in many countries. Do you have um, target markets that are more important for you right now than others? Absolutely. Um, we started our business, <coughs> excuse me, um, in the Netherlands 
last year and um, used the the second half of last year to prove that customers that, that we do have a, um, a product market fit which customers enjoy so we saw some some very nice growth uh, growth rates and grew the company significantly in the last year and now are on the verge of taking it international so we uh, just opened up uh, our office in belgium and we're um, preparing for going live also in Italy and in France this year. And um, as long as customers enjoy our way of solving their legal problems, uh, we will also internationalize in many more markets in Europe and maybe also beyond in the next years. So you have uh, quite ambitious uh, goals for even for this year already. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, the kind of people that you're looking for? First, um, before we talk about concrete positions, um, Uh, let's talk about the kind of attitude that you are looking for. And for you, for the listeners, um, uh, be prepared. Um, there is a chat window here in YouTube, obviously. Able uh, uh, in um, about 10, 15, ask Moritz your questions about this job. And we will take only uh, a handful of questions, maybe two, three, four. Uh, so be prepared to ask your questions very, very fast. But taking question, Moritz, what can for? Well, in general, you know, I mean, we are a fresh company, a so-called startup, if you want to say so. And um, for us, basically, when we look at recruiting, we prefer to look at the attitude, and we educate and train for the skills. Well, why is that? Uh, for a simple reason that in the current state the company is in, we still have to adjust our product and our services to the markets. And that demands lots of flexibility. And it is very hard to predict which um, hammers, if, uh, if I want to use your term, which hammers we're going to need in a, in a year from now. So instead of using for very, uh, looking for very specific instruments only, we prefer, or it is, it is easier to look for people who feel well in an environment that is cont continuously adjusting and uh, evolving further. Um, so to give you an example, there are some, uh, there, there is someone in our team who is currently running uh, our operations in the Netherlands who only graduated from university last year and worked very closely with me and uh, a few other leaders uh, of, in the team. And uh, first in an assisting role, but then he quicked up Uh, he uh, he was so quick in, in uh, taking up what's been needed and thinking for himself that uh, he got well. Basically, we asked him to to take the lead, even for the for the all office and for 45 people in Maastricht. So I think um, this, this one yeah. particular graduate is a very sound example of someone who has a um, an attitude of being a self learner, who's very curious, who's also um, very analytical in the way. He is uh, thinking, and then he's very structured and um, goal-oriented uh, when it comes to finding a solution. And uh, so we, we found that this was a very open-minded and, and fresh and very helpful way of attitude. Mm -hmm. So um, what would happen, for example, I'm a marketer. Uh, we spoke about one position that you will, we will discuss a little bit on. Uh, I'm a marketer, and... Um, I have ex, ex, maybe I'm fresh from university and I have um, a good degree and I have uh, attitude means I'm uh, a fast learner. I can uh, transfer uh, my knowledge into new skills and into results very fast. But I'm not right for the market that you are active in right now in the countries that you're active in right now. Well, it's still makes you a sense to reach out to you. Absolutely, um, certainly. Um, for the simple reason, I mean, one of the reasons we started our company and that we, we offer our services is that we believe the way that clients have um, tried to get a solution for their legal problem is rotten. I mean, the way that lawyers and legal experts have been working for several hundred years is about to change because of new technology. And it is very difficult. I mean, you will. I think you'll you'll have problems to find a book and maybe even a course in university teaching you on how technology and new technology communication channels will help you to to solve legal problems in the future. So, I mean, the reason I'm saying this is that it doesn't. It, it's it's no obstacle at all if you don't have 
an expertise in this field yet because we are all on the way of finding out this. And uh, part of that is being open uh, as a learner and, and being open for experiments and uh, not ruling out also ideas which seem crazy maybe on the first hand, but for, uh, for which there are good causes for giving it a try with a certain uh, limited budget. And then by looking at the, uh, the analytical results, by looking at the results analytically and by, by pure facts and by observing the customer behavior, then uh, let's take it from there and see how we can optimize our products and processes further. And yeah, that's, that's that's why right. can, as long as you speak the uh, language, I, can, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is rather relevant for a marketeer, I would say. Yeah, um, uh, this is actually something um, that I um, experienced in many, uh, I lived in five different countries myself and but I experienced that uh, young countries or people in young countries often have an advantage of is uh, they don't have any preconceived ideas. And they do exactly what you said. They look at what is really there. What does the data really tell me? And then they find very unusual solutions for something that um, established companies, established uh, societies uh, thought was unsolvable. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I used to call it, I mean, it's the, the advantage of the unbiased view. It also happens when you leave your home and you return to your home after being away for several months or maybe even years, and suddenly you start walking into what used to be your home and you start walking through this as if you were a visitor in a museum and, and yeah. everything you see, which used to be common, suddenly you see it as if it were behind a, behind a glass. And I always found this really intriguing and, and fascinating myself because then you can easily compare of what could and should be done differently. Yeah, I completely agree. Let's talk about uh, the concrete positions that you have to offer. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think you have in total at the moment uh, seven different uh, positions to offer. Is that well, correct? Um, if I'm just counting what the, publish, uh, the, the, the job offers published on, on justix.net, uh, I think it's, it's nine different positions at the moment. And, okay. this, and this is only at Justix in Cologne. In addition to that, we also have uh, open positions in our office in Maastricht in the Netherlands. And the people we are looking for in our office in Cologne can be divided into two areas. The one is the area of technology. So we have several developer positions open. Um, we work a lot with PHP and um, the Symfony mm -hmm. framework. So if this is no, uh, not, not, a, uh, not an unknown word for you, then feel, please feel invited to take a closer look at the junior and also senior roles we have uh, in the developer's role. And then the, uh, something which is probably a bit more interesting for the uh, people with a uh, non-technical background is uh, everything around marketing. So what we are currently building is um, a team both for the first for the Dutch market and in the midterm future also for the Italian market and for the French market. So we look for people who are native speakers either in Dutch or in uh, Italian or in French um, and who also lived in these countries uh, but mm -hmm. who are willing to relocate to Cologne. Um, of course we have, a, I mean, we are we're in the process of also having a very nice relocation package and process where we support the identification of a proper flat. Uh, we, we help with getting some, some language courses, even though we speak completely English only in the office. Uh, of course, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt if you're able to order your bread in the bakery in, in, uh, by, by proper German. It also mm -hmm. makes more fun in Cologne because it's usually a very funny experience for people in Cologne, <laughs> in the local shops <laughs> or, in the, or in the local uh, bar. Um, but when it comes, for example, to the content marketeer position, this would be a role where we would look for someone who, is, who has a talent in writing, but also in organizing um, several internal and external content producers. So mm -hmm. when it comes to the Netherlands, for example, we do have um, employees in the market, in the Maastricht office who compose blog posts, who also compose um, YouTube videos, about certain legal advice. And um, these uh, content producers usually are lawyers or jurists themselves. So the content is most likely legally very, very accurate. But this does not necessarily mean that this is written in such a tone of voice that the common people on Main Street, and I used, to, I'm thinking always about my grandma or my, my, my cousin or so on, that they could understand 
the solution for their legal problem in plain and simple words. Um, yeah. and that is, so this is a, 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 a translation which is necessary um, and this needs to be done from someone who, who enjoys working with language and who has a sort of, I mean, not only the rationale, but also a, a, a stomach feeling, a gut feeling um, about words people use to describe their problems. So there's also an SEO uh, perspective to it. There's also a coordination aspect about it because next to the internally employed content producers, there are also external um, partners of us, some yeah. lawyers, some others are journalists and, uh, so this role would be the one to coordinate this and to mm -hmm. ensure that on the written and on the audio and on the video side, we are continuously publishing relevant content. Yeah, legal you issues. mentioned a, a, a number of different uh, objectives now. Uh, if you would have to rank them from, from most important, uh, which one would come out uh, right at the top? Which uh, task, which result? Mm -hmm. I think the um, next to so the language proficiency needs to be a given. So it's more like the uh, the, the coffee, right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. the dream is if uh, so, the top skill would be to be a very good organizer and communicator who is able to keep the overview um, when mm -hmm. several people are reaching out or demanding some, something of the uh, of the person at the same time. Yeah. How would you know that uh, someone is a good organizer? When you imagine you, you hired someone, half a year has passed and uh, you want to evaluate, um, do you want to keep him on or do you let him go after this uh, six months trial period that is usual in Germany? Um, if you would look at his performance, what would you look for? What would tell you, yeah, this guy is really good or this lady is really excellent? Well, we try to build a culture um, in the organization um, where lots of responsibility and um, uh, accountability um, is given to each team member. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, once you have defined the areas of responsibility, uh, then the, the, as a next, next start, uh, step of this, you also define certain indicators of performance. Mm -hmm. um, and with regard to, and this is the uh, again the nice advantage about having online businesses that almost everything can be put in metrics, mm -hmm. so you can see, um, for example, for for such a position, you can uh, not only see how many people actually um, read the content being published and how long did they need to do it, how what, how often was it being shared or recommended to others, you can also uh, gather the um, the feedback of course from from coworkers. And this is something that I would always do. We, we strongly believe in 360 degrees feedback. So for any review we do, um, we ask all stakeholders who have, who have been working uh, with such a position. Um, and so it, it so would be- if, if I may ask, um, <clears throat> for this position, uh, the reach would be one criteria that you achieve, or would it be uh, actual leads in some form of kind that you're looking for? Um, it would first be reach, and of course, the quota of reach turning into um, leads needs to be considered as well. But this very much depends on the type of content and the type of channel. For example, face Facebook content is very well suited for for creating and for uh, building a brand, yeah. but it's not going to lead uh, to, to many leads. Whereas content which is primarily um, uh, pushed by Google and by performance uh, marketing, by search traffic, uh, has a much higher conversion rate. So, of course, you need to distinguish between the channels. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I do agree, of course, it is uh, also next to, to reach and leads, it is also feedback from, uh, from co-workers, though. So, um, the more people feel well by organizing, by, by, by working with such a person, person, the better, as long as the targets mm -hmm. are being met. Yeah, okay. Good. Um, if if I would want to apply for this position, um, what would you like uh, to see from me when I reach out to you? First of all, in which form do you want? Uh, uh, do you have like a, a preferred form that people should reach out to you? And um, when they do, what what could they um, tell you or send you that would help you evaluate their skills? Where you would feel okay. 
if I get this, then I can really understand if this person might be helpful or not for me. Well, I think if, if the person can help me describing a situation where he or she had a similar challenge um, and the way he, he was trying to, uh, to, to meet that target and to overcome that challenge and how he or she, I mean, what, what the person has learned out of this and uh, how and why she would like to do it again. This would be very relevant, of course. And assuming that there is no such relevance, uh, relevant experience before, then um, I think the more authentic the person can make clear that he or she is willing to learn and walk the extra mile to, to get there, um, then there is, of course, also a chance for or the, the potential for, for giving them, uh, giving such a junior a chance. However, we're primarily looking for someone with uh, some relevant experience in this field already. Yeah, I understand. When it, when it comes to the format, it's it's fairly easy. Just go to, to justix.net. Um, it's and, and please use the formula over there. You can directly apply, for example, with your LinkedIn account. And uh, by this, you're directly put into our running processes and then we will get back to the candidate very, very soon and ask for uh, for a first uh, phone call or video call uh, with one of our internal experts. And um, the second round already will be a personal get to personal invitation and get to know with several stakeholders. And then we'll have to see if we organize maybe even some event where all stakeholders meet at one day and then there will be a straight feedback and maybe even an offer um, after this personal meeting. This is okay. how we do it, for example, for the people operations uh, position. We're, we're having some meetings tomorrow, and straight after tomorrow, the uh, people already will get an offer. So it's a very lean and very quick process. Yeah, okay. Um, just for to have a complete overview before we move on to the, to the next job. And uh, by the way, we are getting the first questions right now. Uh, if you also want to ask a question, uh, then ask it now because we will take only two or three questions. So now is the time to reach out. <laughs> so we, before we move on to the uh, to the IT positions, um, uh, Jim, uh, can you tell us very quickly um, if I apply it through um, to justx.net, um, be the person my CV? Will it be, um, do you have someone in HR who will make the first selection or do I talk to you or do I talk to one of your managers? Well, it is. I mean, we do have um, one team uh, member who is responsible for reviewing and administrating all incoming um, applications. Uh, her name is Heike. She's also mentioned on our website uh, at the bottom. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also directly getting a copy and I am reviewing it myself as well. So, but it's absolutely fine to just address Heike very easily. And um, then we will take it up very quickly. Mm -hmm. from there. So. So last question, does Heike prefer perfume or chocolate or no, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, that was the <laughs> um, We start to get the first questions. Let me um, give you the first question right now before we go on to the IT position. Uh, Maria Janel, I think, uh, writes and she asked, um, uh, you've mentioned attitude is an important factor in considering someone do you think age would be a concern in bringing out uh, significant contributions in your company? Well, is age our, cus issue? our customers are basically from all, well, I mean, we have maybe not too many children calling us, but uh, starting at the age of 18 uh, up to very high ages of, I think, 80 plus, 90 plus, we have all sorts of different customers. And um, I think we also need this diversity internally. So, of course, age is no concern at all. And I also personally believe it never should be. So um, already now, we, I mean, we do have very young people, I think, in the age of 19 uh, in Justix. I think this is our youngest team member at the moment. And I always uh, used to joke that my co-founder and colleague Rolf already has gray hair. <laughs> and so, so I think we are already pretty diverse. And uh, of course, this is no obstacle at all. It should be about competencies and, and, and attitude only and not about physical um, things like this. Mm -hmm. And you said already uh, before that your company anyway works in English, so language is not an obstacle. Uh, how about um, uh, non-EU citizens, um, people who need uh, a visa? I mean, of course, for Dutch marketing, it's very unlikely that um, a Dutch person will need a visa. Uh, but uh, maybe for the IT positions, uh, would that be something that you would shy away from 
if, if someone applies who would need help with the visa process? On, on contrary, on contrary, we, are, we have made very good um, experiences already. I mean, uh, I know plenty of entrepreneurs who complain about the very long bureaucracy processes to, uh, to get visas and to onboard people. And while the city of Cologne certainly has no reputation for being highly efficient and, and transparent about everything, I can only <laughs> say that I mean we we have hired two um, uh, new team members uh, who both are coming from from Eastern Europe or no actually from from the Russian side, so they both had to apply for visas and uh, the pro the process was very uh, smooth and and easy. Well, maybe uh, it, it was a bit more time consuming than than I personally experienced it myself because it was luckily it was Heike taking care of it together with the colleagues but it all went well um, and of course this is no obstacle at all uh, again it's only about competencies attitude and and the willingness to learn and uh, we we do take it I mean we have very high expectations of candidates so please be prepared to that we're really taking a close look and we try to find candidates who have outstanding marks who really I mean, I try to find some indications for an outstanding performance and, and, and character in people. If it be in sports or yeah. in, in leisure time activities or in school reports or whatever. But once we have fallen in love, we will do everything to date and to also get engaged and in the end even get married. That's a very good example. Um... the IT positions, um, you have uh, several ones um, today we wanted to talk about one, which can you tell us a little bit about? Still there? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I think we're having some yeah. connection issues. Yeah. You, I hear you very well. Excellent. Good. I just moved into another room a bit closer to the Wi-Fi. So, okay. Um, <laughs> but the question was I, I, IT positions. Uh, you wanted to talk about one of them. Yes. So basically, um, as most developers, I think nowadays, I mean, it's, it's 2018. So of course, we are working in a very agile um, environment. So it's a very agile and independently acting team. Uh, right now, it's it's one team of developers, um, like both on the front end and on the back end side, of course. We are um, completely uh, working on um, with immediate um, uh, immediate shipping, um, so it's completely hosted on AWS, and as I said, we're we're working with the PHP and, and Symfony framework, and you can get some some further information about our tech stack uh, when you take a closer look into the uh, into the job descriptions. So uh, for me, I'm just mm -hmm. a philosopher and economist, so I think I'm the wrong one to uh, to, to <laughs> elaborate on the on the tech stack. Um, I think then my yeah, colleagues I was also just nodding along to everything you said because. <laughs> Yeah, I have it's, I'm, psychology I'm, in my background. <laughs> but you, you wanted to yeah, talk about the yeah. UX IX. Um, exactly. The, so next to the uh, next to the hardcore developers, we we do need um, further talent and team members, both on the junior and as uh, also on the senior senior side when it comes to a user interface. So everything around design, to the creation of um, and to the internationalization of our brand. So right now, I mean, we have one very big business model. It's called Hello Law. And it's, as I mentioned, it's active in the Netherlands already. And we're taking it to another, to other countries. So um, next to um, the, the user experience concept, we, we do, luckily, we, we have found someone uh, of whom we're very proud, um, who will uh, lead our UX team. And we're looking for some operational hands on the design side, um, especially for, for digital design, so some digital creatives who uh, can help to, um, to set up online campaigns, uh, who everything visual on the web, but also on videos. On, Sorry, um, excuse me, a sentence got lost. 
Okay, so we're looking for someone who can help us with everything visual um, that needs to be designed both on our own real estate, on our own website and uh, through our communication channels, but also once we brand and advertise on, on partners' websites. So um, when mm -hmm. it comes to blog posts, to um, to video content, um, and maybe even on, on specific new mobile channels, and this might even lead to pure voice uh, technology. So when you think about, I mean, I know it, it sounds contraintuitive, uh, but even if we think about how an Alexa skill for legal services should look and feel like, there will be some parts next to the pure audio experience. Yeah. There will also be parts of the user journey that need to uh, that, that will have some visual connection to it. So we do look for some, for one or two team members. Who do have some very profound experience in, um, in, in creation and in user interaction and in, in design, um, who can help on, uh, on on building such things and uh, taking them to a very high professional standard, so that it will make the customer experience um, really well it, as appealing as it can be. Because in the end, it's still a negative issue, right? I mean, people yeah. reach out to us because they have a legal problem, and our core belief is. That in legal legal services should not only be about regulations and laws, but it should be about the people and the way that they feel. Yeah. Because behind every legal problem, there are humans having an emotion about the legal problem, mm -hmm. and we want to change the experience people are having when solving this legal problem. So the design is a very important matter of this. Yeah, how would you um, uh, how would uh, I if I would apply for this job as uh, U UXY, I think it's called. Um, 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 what kind of um, documents, what kind of projects uh, could I send you that would help you uh, the most to evaluate me? What would you expect well, to see? Um, definitely a portfolio of uh, things which have been created in the past. Um, and I mean, this is, and as the more, the better. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, both on print, but especially on digital and maybe even on video. So the more references people can send us, the better. Yeah. Is uh, diversity uh, um, a bonus? I mean, if I, uh, different platforms, video, audio, um, uh, website, and so on, if I uh, have experience in, in all of these areas, is that a plus or? Well, yes, in the beginning, I would say it is a plus because, um, you know, right now we are only dealing or serving for two different markets and the team is still rather small. And we will have to see, I mean, hopefully, I mean, of course, we, we want to scale as much as possible, meaning that we, we would be very happy if we don't have to build a team of several dozens of creatives uh, in the next years. But this could be. And assuming that yeah. we would build a larger team, then we would also focus on special um, special areas, of course. In the current state, a generalist um, who has done it all, sort of, uh, who's interested in learning it all, would be preferred, uh, preferable for us. Yeah, um, a very hard shift. Uh, we have another question coming in from T. Uh, T. Jess. Uh, T. Jess writes, uh, you mentioned uh, agile way of working. Uh, do you have a DevOps model implemented and do you have any positions in uh, DevOps? Uh, yes, we do have a, uh, we do have a DevOps team, uh, but we don't have any open positions in DevOps anymore. Uh, the team is complete and we're very happy with our current colleagues at the moment. And luckily they are also happy with us. Okay, good. Good. Uh, thank you. Then we will take maybe one more question. Uh, I have a question for you as well, uh, Moritz, and this is, which question did I not ask you yet that you wished uh, I would have asked you so that you can talk about it? <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah. What is, when you think about the people you want to work with, what is uh, the number one thing, the most important thing you still want to get across in this last minutes that we have? Well, I think when it comes to culture, what we really, I, I told you that we are trying to identify um, some indications for outperformance in the, um, in, the, in the CV of people or in the profile. What we also look for is, in, is to have made, you know, I mean, when you, when you 
achieved something really well. There are basically two ways to, to react on this. There is a certain uh, type of people who get very proud and self-confident. And uh, in German, we have a saying that they, they wear up their nose pretty high. So it's, I mean, you can also call it arrogance, right? So, and, and these people, and so that's one, one type of people, but there's also this tiny fraction who actually, the more successful they are, the more modest they become. Um, because they have made the experience, you know, it, it could be that, I mean, like, for example, like for myself, there was once uh, several 10, 15 years ago, I, like in a tiny fraction of science and business ethics and corporate governance, I knew that there were very few people out there who probably have as much of an in-depth expertise and know-how as I did. However, mm -hmm. Being so deep into the into the matter, I only realized, holy fucking shit, the the, moder the matter is actually even more complex. How could other people even dare to call me an expert when I see how much more complex it actually is and how much more needs, how much more perspectives need to be included? So, what we are looking for next to the um, the indica indicator for Sorry, some you got lost for a second. Uh, you, what you are looking for was the last is the is the the, the question. Uh, is is the is to develop uh, some modesty as a consequence of success, yeah. and I think this is um, um, if, uh, an attitude most of our team members, I think even all of us, have in common. That um, we we we've had this moment once in our life, maybe um, that we uh, when somebody regarded us as experts, but as a consequence of that, we became more modest instead of arrogant. Yeah. And um, maybe the last question, uh, fitting because it very nicely fits to what you just. When you think about uh, the team that you have right now and the chemistry in this team, uh, Maria asked, uh, "What do you think? Uh, what what is it in the chemistry that makes your tea, your company successful?" I truly believe that it is uh, the, the core of the company is the culture um, of the good people. Thank you very much, uh, Moritz Delbrück. CEO of uh, Justix uh, GmbH. Uh, thank you, Moritz, for coming and joining us in the Immigrant Spirit uh, podcast with nine open positions. If you want uh, to work together with Moritz, if you want to apply to one of his open uh, jobs, uh, go to justix.net. There you find uh, all the open positions. And uh, hopefully soon, Moritz will reach out to you after you have applied. Great. Much again, Moritz. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was my pleasure. My name is Chris Piak. I'm the Managing Director of Immigrant Spirit um, GmbH. And if you want to hear more podcasts with more German employers who hire international talent who work in English, then please subscribe to our newsletter at um, piak.eu slash podcast. That's my name, piak.eu slash podcast or if that's easier for you, at immigrantspirit.com slash podcast. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Bye-bye.